Number 10, Junior Sam Brennan. Also at the line, number 12, Senior Randall Griffin. The third guy in the line, number 15, Senior Evan Parker. Starting at four, number 20, Junior John Dowling. And at the other forward, number 24, senior, Chris Laborio. On third is coached by Joe Salina. Now to the mountain. Starting at guard, number 12, junior, Lady Thayer. With the other guy, number 14, Junior and Benedict. Starting it forward, number 23, Senior, Nolan Rose. Also at forward, number 24, Junior, Chris Reed. And the third forward in the lineup, number 30, Junior, Matt Cohen. And the third is first by Pat Parkett. Welcome to Championship Night. This is the championship game between Montpelier and the dark green uniforms. I'm going to show you their home whites. And each team with a win in the first round of the tip-off tournament 2008 to advance here. I'm going to show you defeating Otter Valley and Montpelier defeating Fairhaven and a foul on Sean Dowling of Montpelier right away. So you got the starting lineups from Marty McDonald, the PA announcer, the athletic director here at MSJ. Nelson Matt Donor was the leading scorer in that first game of the year against Otter Valley to the line. Eight seconds off the clock, and it followed first, obviously, on Donnelly, first on the team. And Donor will put MSJ up 1-0. A lot of keys to the night for the Mounties. First of all, they have to play as mistake-free as they can, this Montpelier squad. Good ball handlers in the backcourt, uh, very good defensive team. They got some height down low. Gribbons handled the ball well, bringing it up against the press. Caborio, 24, was able to shoot not only from the outside, but from the inside, he's able to really score. And there's the quick push. And that's the next key I was getting to Tempo. Tempo, Tempo, Tempo. 2-2 Two -two ball game. There's a the press in the backcourt. And that's the other thing. Mache's going to be able to handle the pressure. There's a catch and a travel called. Rhodes made the catch, but then just lost his balance and traveled. We'll have a turnover. And Montpelier, very deep. This is Brigham with the basketball. They've got five potential leading scorers on the floor at all times. That ball will be picked up by Brigham. He'll bring it back and Gribben to Evans. And to me, Evan and Gaborio were just the leaders the other night as far as if I had to look at a one-two punch. Or Evan Parker, I should say. Number 15 and Gaborio. And it's going to be Dowling going to the line. It's tied at two and we're at just 726. Just a tad where... 30 seconds have gone by. Very quiet. He'll miss his dowling. There's a lot of shh in the stands. He'll miss that first shot. Get MSJ, MSJ without the services of Ben Sexton as he's unable to uh, play tonight. He'll be back in action for the next game. But a very short bench, just two people deep. As Alta Bell and Lee John Bison down there. And that'll be off from Gribben out of bounds. So we're looking for Benedict. MSJ's got to find themselves a confident point guard tonight. Because they're going to have to have somebody really be able to set the offense up and also be able to handle the ball and handle the pressure that Montpelier will throw at them. Montpelier looking for their first title here at the tip-off tournament. And that's going to be knocked down by Montpelier. Gaborio in the front court. Gaborio at the elbow will give it up. And it's going to be bring him up, bring him. No, short on the shot. Dowling will get the rebound, bring it back, and bring him now. We'll Reset the offense. We'll go right to Dowling. They will not take a lot of time off the clock on their typical offensive set. MSJ is looking for a game in the 40 or 50 point range. Anything over that, and it's going to be a Montpelier win. They had 71 points in their opening win against Fairhaven. That was the rebound by Rhodes. It's 3 2 Montpelier right now. And MSJ with the basketball. Donor will come up and get it. Donor, like I said, was the leading scorer. He's a Mill River transfer to MSJ. Gribbons will back up, and there's going to be the spin, and ball partially blocked from down to Donor. Donor looking for the outlet, not there. He'll put it on the floor on a bounce pass and get it to Thayer. 4 3 and Mache with the lead, and Thayer up, and no. Set on the rim, wouldn't drop down, and Brigham 
Right now, the Temple is totally favoring Montpelier. You know, they threw the ball away right there. Eight out of ten times, they'll make the break press, the fast break work for them. So Mounties will have the ball, and you can see Gaborio coming back, number 24, and he'll be on the inbounds pass. There with the catch, he'll turn, work it to the middle of the floor, and with the dribble, break into the front court. There's a little dish off to Reedy. I'm sure needing a couple of those guys in the front court to have double-digit nights. That's going to be Benedict with a three-point shot and get it. Benedict with the tray makes it 7-3 MSJ. Mounties shooting the very, ball very well early tonight. Brigham to go up and no, nope, won't roll in for him. Tipped around, tipped around, goes on the baseline out of bounds, white basketball. So the Mounties off to a very good start, very quick start with 5.46 to go here in the first quarter. Mache wants a more patient game, and Montpelier would favor a more up-tempo game. Travel, Benedict up in the air and travel in order to go to the basketball. You know, like I said, they have to play as mistake-free as they can because if they commit a lot of unforced errors and turnovers like that, like you just saw, they just do not have the type of team right now at this point in the season to make up for those mistakes. Gaborio will be up and no, hard off the back of the iron on a long shot, and the rebound comes out to Montpelier. Parker with the dribble gives it off to Brigham, and he'll get it! He'll get a three-pointer for Brigham. It's a 7-6 ball game. Montpelier down by the one point. Benedict back to Donor, back to Thayer. Looking to break the timeline, he'll go backwards to go forwards. Too long a pass, Rhodes with a nice tip, will get the basketball under control and give it to Thayer between circles. Brigham favoring him to the, make him go left-handed and he'll lose the ball on the dribble. Picked up, squirted out like a center in football. He hiked the ball up ahead and here's Gaborio. Gaborio will take it and there'll be an offensive foul. Yeah, I'm not sure what Gaborio was sinking there. But it's called by Pat Whale and it'll be an offensive foul. Yeah, he uh, was looking like he was looking for a plane for a whistle, and he did get the whistle, but unfortunately the foul was called against him. Benedict with a nice reach, saved the pass, and now they'll go to the middle of the floor to Reedy. There, on the press break, got in the air, and got the pass back to Benedict. There with the catch, he'll drive, had the ball stripped away, and they'll throw it out in the middle of the floor, and that's still anybody's ball, he picked up by Brigham. So Montpelier looking for the lead here on a 7-6 ball game, and he'll give the pass back. Dowling blocked by Rhodes to Benedict, and Benedict going hard to the floor. Brigham will save it in the front. That's going to be over and back, yeah. Gribbins was in the back court when he grabbed the ball into the front court. And you can see Joe Salerno lobbying his point. So after a pretty animated conversation with the official, we'll get back to the ball game now. So Rose will pick it up off the pass and give it to Thayer. Thayer, you can see them overplay Thayer. They want him to go to the left side. Gaborio gambled, missed the steal. This is Donor. He'll take it down against Dowling. Turn fire, no good. Now, I don't know if he nicked the rim or not, but it comes down in the hands of Montpelier. They got the dark green uniforms and they're when they look for the well, he came in for the layup. Dowling did passes at his knees. He couldn't handle it. Goes out of bounds off from Dowling. That'll bring number 33 in the ball game, Corey Mishot. So Mishot in the ball game, he'll go play the ball defensively. He'll take the pass and bounce. 33 in dark green is Mishot for Montpelier. And Dowell, uh, that's not Dowling, that's Brigham able to reach up and slap the ball away. Stays with the Mounties. I'll just move it over to the corner of the gym here at the Common Avenue gym. This is the championship game here for the tip off tournament. 2008, and Gribbins will slap the ball away, and Mr. Hijack had a chance to make the play. And he bobbled it there. He is at every sporting event I do. I, I, that guy sees more sports than I do in a year. You talk about supporting your community. Reedy open. Oh, and it was blocked by Dowling. Oh, he's in MHJ's house, but he said, I don't think so. And then Gribbins going to his knees like Marcus Haynes. Able to keep control of the ball, and that's going to be good. Three pointer, and that was me shot with the bucket. 9-7 now, Montpelier with the two-point lead, and Benedict and company, this is where they can't get rattled against the press. You must be patient against this press when you don't have a true point guard ball handler. Reedy can't get the ball to cooperate. We've got a foul and rebounding action, and I believe it's going to be on Donor. It's going to be a mounty foul. And Jim Corball with the call. Yeah, it's going to be a foul on Donor. We're going to have MSJ timeout taken. They're down 9-7 with 3.39 to go in the first quarter play in the title game.
Oriole and Brigham in the backcourt. Let's be Brigham bringing the ball up. We get to Gribben. Gribben's quiet tonight so far. And oh, Brigham is in. Another three for Brigham, and it'll be 12 7. Now the lead goes to five. And again, Emma Shea's just got to stay in the game plan of the press break here. Rhodes goes left, goes right, then throws over the top of the defense to Donor. And he actually shuffled his feet and didn't get caught for the travel. There, up, fake, shot, went to Reedy, and it was last touched by Montpelier. Play Montpelier did a good job of collapsing on the ball, but really taking away the passing lane. Also, they didn't overcommit the ball fake in the air. Benedict they just flick the ball out to Reedy. Donor with the touch will come back to Benedict. Benedict being guarded by Gribbins. Gribbins. Tell you what, see him come out and extend the pressure on Benedict. Montpelier's going to play like that all night. They'll be aggressive like that. They're going to be tipped around, tipped around and controlled by Rhodes. And he tried to throw it out from the Montpelier player. Stayed in bounds. And here comes Montpelier with the ball. Gaborio will go up. And Gaborio can't get the ball to drop. It'll be rebounded by Rhodes. And looking to outlet the ball, he'll give it to Thayer. There's pass almost picked off by Gaborio. And again, now Mr. Hijack makes the play in the stands. Good hands this time by... Mr. Hijack. Evan Parker, number 15, coming in the basketball game now. He'll replace number 12. Of course, that's Gribbons. Donor looks and fires the ball into Benedict. He's in the backcourt being guarded by Parker. Parker, in the first game, remember, had that floppy mohawk haircut. He does hair cut now. I told him before the game, that's bad luck to change in the middle of the uh, tournament like that, his haircuts. Ball was tipped. It's going to stay with MSJ. They need somebody to take the ball out of bounds, and it's going to be Nolan Rhodes. Rhodes on the baseline. They run that box formation, and boy, nothing popping free, and he's got to beat the count. And he has to come all the way up to the middle of the court, midcourt, to Reedy. Donor sets, fires, and that thing will rim out. Rhodes with the rebound once, twice, and blocked from behind. This is Donor falling down, throws it up. No, it won't go. He almost pulled off a circus shot there. Gaborio up ahead to Brigham, and he's feeling it from the outside. He's got it. Eight points for Brigham. Eight of the 14 points belong to Brigham. Montpelier now with a seven-point lead, and they are dribbling into traffic, and the ball slapped away, but they're going to call a foul on Brigham. Jim Corbo with the call. 1-0. That is Brigham. And it's not a shooting foul. It's only the team's third foul. And it'll just be on the baseline. The Mounties again, they totally clear out the middle of the paint. Leave him no options except to throw out top to a double trap, and it's going to be a foul. Too far, Gaborio will pick up the foul. I wasn't sure if it was going to be him or Parker, and it was going to be Gaborio assess the foul, and that will bring in the first sub of the ball game. will be number four, Kyle Martin. So Martin, number four, in the ball game for Gaborio. He'll pick up his second personal, and they want to protect him from getting that third. There's still a minute 59 to go here in the first quarter. Paul Parker. Just, they threw it to him, and they lost his footing. Tips it ahead to Brigham, and then Martin will get the bucket. So a little circus time there, but they still coordinate the shot. 16-7 now, Montpelier. There to Rhodes. That's me shot on Rhodes. Rhodes will turn to the middle of the floor, throw the trap, and get it now to Thayer. Benedict pops out, and boys pass knocked on Parker. Like I said the other night, was just so, so impressive. Rhodes. Slides the pass out to Reedy. He'll run in one hander. He'll leave it on the front of the rim. And there's the pass up ahead to Parker. Parker on the break. Will not get the finish. Me shot. Hustled down the floor. Got the missed shot. Got the rebound down to Martin. Little jump hook. And he'll get it. Hey, Montpelier. They're fired up. They got it going now. They got the tempo where they want it. They got people on the boards. And they've got the 18 7 lead with a minute 16 to go in the first quarter. Down is their second time out here the first quarter. They've been held to seven points. It's 18 to seven right now. And I'm telling you with the lead. Reedy looking for anybody to give the ball to. Gives it to Thayer. They're up. No good. Rebound will be off from, I believe one off from Mishan out of bounds. It should stay with MSJ. And we'll have Rhodes on the baseline. He'll bring the ball into play for the Mounties. So you get the box formation set. MSJ looks. The donor, he'll make the catch, the fire, and no, it'll rim out on him, and it's going to be tipped around. Rhodes will chase down it. The ball, that is. He'll set himself. Nope, wide open, couldn't knock it down. Me shot up ahead now to Parker. Parker to Martin. He'll try to settle it down. Ball loose on the floor. Everybody's still going for it, and it'll be 
taken over by Thayer, out along the baseline. Dowling back in the ballgame, number 20 for Montpelier. And Reedy with the grab, and boy, no foul call. They had a arm, whole bunch of Reedy's arm on the hold, no call. They're penetrated, kicked down, and now on the circle move, oh, Rhodes goes hard to the floor, calls for the travel. His feet went out from underneath him, and he calls for the travel. Aiden King, number 21 in the ballgame for Montpelier. He'll replace Dowling, so Dowling again making his presence felt defensively out there for Montpelier. Martin with the catch in the corner. Gaborio on the bench right now. Now it's going to be another th three threes for Brigham in the first quarter. As it goes to 21 7 now. As, that's a 15 0 run, I believe, unofficially for Montpelier. Nice catch by Donor. They'll slide the ball inside. Reedy up and got it. He'll convert it. That time they worked the ball down the floor against the press very effectively. This will count. Oh, it's just going to be off the mark, but it's a Montpelier first quarter of 21 to 9 over MSJ in the championship game. So Montpelier took them a few minutes in that first quarter, but they got everything going where they wanted. They got the defensive intensity up. They got Brigham just nailing it. I mean, he's come tonight with his shooting shoes on. He's already got three threes, and I've lost track. He's got a bunch of points. And he's just confident. And that, I'm not sure what happened on that, other than it was a miss. They threw the ball, and nobody made an attempt to make the catch. Gribbins passed up the outside shot. And Brigham penetrates, kicks out. Parker sets, high arcing shot will drain it. Three pointer for Evan Parker. 26 to nine, and MSJ on the verge of being out of the ball game in the first half of basketball. One. One. Rhodes on the baseline. Again, Montpelier's got that intensity cranked up above 10 right now. We have a fall called on Mishad. Yeah, he grabbed a hold of a bunch of MSA jersey and won't let him loose on that play. Now he'll go down as the fifth team fall first on Mishad. And Rhodes looks, and they have nothing posted up inside. They have to go up top. Nice catch by Benedict. And that's going to be a foul on Mishad. He's going to pick up his second foul, 16th foul. And the only thing going for Mishad right now is that before the before too long here, the way things are going, he'll be at the free throw line shooting the one and one. And now Martin coming back in, as that's going to be the second foul on Mishad. So Martin back in the ball game. Kyle Martin wearing number four in dark green for Montpelier. Reedy with the catch. He'll wheel to the basket, lose the dribble, a little jump hook, and travel call. Mache will turn the ball over and down 26 to 9. They need a whole bunch of defensive stops right now. Brigham got it. Oh, he's hot. Four threes in the first half for Brigham. It's unofficial. It could even be more. He's almost at the 20 point marks already. He could be looking at a career night right now. 29-9 and a timeout taken, third timeout taken by MSJ in the first half of basketball. MSJ trying everything they can, trying to burn as many timeouts. Altabell in the ball game, Louie with the catch. We'll get it off the Rhodes. He'll go up on a couple pump fakes. Miss. Good patience by Rhodes. Nice try by on the assist by Altabell. Gribbins to Martin to the bucket. No. Rebound. We'll come down to MSJ. We have a foul and it should be the one and one. I have it as a seventh team foul. And a one and one. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna allow Dowling to come into the ball game for Aiden Martin. Dowling number 20 right there coming into the ball game for Montpelier. And they're going to the line for MSJ. And this is just a 1-1. One one. That's with 6.42 to go in the first quarter. First half, I'm sorry, second quarter, first half. 6.42, 29-9, Montpelier, 29-10 on the made free throw. Well, no leads insurmountable, but yeah, I gotta start pecking away at something like this. Now, we'll make them both. 29-11. So Mache gets in double digits on those free throws. Gribbins spins, penetrates, running one-hander, no good. Altabell with the box out and the rebound will give it off to 
Doner, and he'll hand it back to Thayer, and Thayer will go right down the middle of the floor to Rhodes. He passes up the shot, hits Altabell, Louis Altabell on the wing, and the finish. Yeah, I was just wondering why Louis wasn't in the game earlier. Oh, Gribbins with a complete 360 move, and then the left-handed shot, and no good to fade. The fire, and Martin will get it. 29 to 13, Montpelier with the lead. You're in a championship game at the tip-off tournament. There, coast to coast with the miss. Up ahead, here comes Gribbins. Hey, Montpelier just works so well. They have a lot of talent, but they put all those talented pieces together and form a good team, good chemistry, unselfishness. Like I said, there, there's five leading scorers, potential from all on the floor. Of course, Brigham stepping up here in his first half. He's been the man. Parker fades shot, no good. On the fadeaway, the rebound will come down to Gribbons. So he'll get in the air and pass it off to Dowling. There's the cut by Parker. He'll get in the paint, turn the jump hook. No. Parker kept the ball alive. He'll go to the corner, and I think he touched it last. And I believe I'm wrong. It's going to be green basketball. Now Lee John Bison, 21, coming in the basketball game. He'll replace Donor for MSJ. So Bison and 21 White out there for the Mounties. There's some disruption out there in the student section of the bleachers. Not sure what that was all about. Shot, no good there with the miss, and the rebound comes down to Gribbins. A one and out deal, there's the line pass ahead to Parker. And that's gonna be off the front of the rim, and it'll tip, come back to Brigham. He'll put it up, and oh, a rare miss for Brigham. There with the pass over to Altabell. Louis will spin back, give the ball to Thayer, and 5-10 to go in this quarter. We're in the second quarter of play, and it's been an all Montpelier first half of basketball. Yeah, Rhodes trying to establish some position. He'll pivot, ball fake, duck up underneath, and won't drop. Then he'll get in there, keep the ball alive, and he'll pressure the outlet pass now. Good job by Rhodes, just didn't get the ball to cooperate with him. Gribbins to Martin, he came along the baseline, gets the cut, goes inside, and I'll tell you what, nice job by Martin, and I tell you, he comes off from the bench. And gives you some valuable minutes. He could be a starter in many, many, many teams. Good looking player, Martin. Is. Altabell will come back between circles, get the pass back to Benedict. He'll double clutch, fake. Good effort, ball went and drop, and here comes Montpelier. Parker with it, number 15. 33 13 to score. Montpelier by 20. And Alonso Maje puts on tremendous defensive stop. They're not going to keep the game at that 40 50 point mark. Well, tell you what, Montpelier came out, established the temple. They put on the defensive pressure, they have the intensity, and Brigham's shooting is really. Help motivate them, motor them out to this big lead. Lee John Bison with a lot of fakes and then tries to follow a shot up. Tipped it, kept the live Rhodes on the floor. Spin, planted his pivot foot, ball stripped away. Hits Martin in the back, goes to Parker. Pass up ahead for Gribbins is tipped and beyond bounds. It should be last touch by the Mounties. Green basketball. Gaborio, 24, coming in for Martin. He's coming back in with two fouls and 3.47 to go in the half. That's a Montpelier change, Gaborio. Nice catch by Dowling. He's going to wheel. And no, look at Dowling. Quick to the basket. Got it. Followed the shot up. Just snatched the ball off the rim and then put it up off the glass. And then 35 13 Montpelier. Nice catch by Benedict. He puts the brakes on real quick. He's about two, two and a half feet outside the elbow there. And the ball slapped away. And that's going to be tip pass. Gabori will knock it further forward. Be picked up by Brigham on the run. And no. There with the rebound, will duck underneath the defender. 3.15 to go, and there's going to be Bizon with a good catch. Sets their field. I thought Benedict was going to set up for the three ball, and good catch by Bizon. That will squirt the pass over to Altabell. He'll turn, give up the shot, come back to Thayer. He won't give up the shot, and he'll miss. Parker with the basketball. I'll tell you, Montpelier couldn't have asked for more. The, the tempo has just been handed to him on a silver platter. The game being played at every facet that Montpelier wants to be played at. Donor coming in, number 30 for Mache. Misha, 33 for Montpelier, and 22 coming in is Pat Curran. Those are Montpelier changes, those last two. Misha with the catch on the inbounds pass, goes to Parker. He tried to thread the needle, go to Gaborio, and, and it's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, it's going to be a misplayed by MSJ. He'll be out of bounds. 
Montpelier will have the ball, and it looks like Brigham coming over to bring the ball out of play. Now they're going to have Mishad come over. So Mishad easily put the ball in, and then Rhodes would almost have saved Joe Salerno with the grab over there from Montpelier, the head coach. And Gaborio will just move over toward the front of the scores table and get no pressure in the backcourt with 2.43 to go in the half. And they're shading a big rush here at the end of this half just to get themselves mentally back in the game. Bijan Bijan with the rebound on the air ball goes to Donor to Benedict now and he'll save it, throw it back underneath his own basket and man, I tell you, that pretty much epitomized tonight for MSA, foul Gaborio. I'm waiting to see who's going to go to the line here. Bizon called for the foul, and it looks like Gaborio going to the line, so. And it's official. Bizon did pick up the foul. That's going to be the team's fourth. And two shots coming up as Gaborio obviously was fouled in the act of shooting. And he'll swish the first shot. 36 points. And that, they're right about on target where they were in the uh, their first win of the tournament over Fairhaven. They ended up with 71 points that ball game, and they're at 36 right here. Still with 2.23 to go in the half. They're actually ahead of that pace. And it's a good job by Bison getting that loose ball and able to get the ball into the guard's hand. And Mache, again, they need a, a good seven or eight point run here. Up, and there's two of them. Nice finish on the play. Kern, Gaborio, the drive, the underhand shuffle shot, and he got it. Oh, Gaborio did it from the outside in the first game of the tournament, did it from the inside there. He's on fades, might be short, comes down in the hands of Rhodes. He'll go up, foul. Rhodes going to the line. I'll tell you what, no one Rhodes playing hard, getting up and down the floor, crashing them boards. And that was Curran, number 22, that picked up the foul. I believe I called number 11, Williams, Curran before, so I apologize for that. Number 11 is Williams, the dark green for Montpelier, as we'll have Rhodes set it up in a 38-15 game with a minute 43 to go in the second quarter, and nope. So Rhodes on his second attempt will be up, and yes. Took it a while to decide if it was going to go down, but it did. Brigham. The Mishad makes the catch, the fire, and there you go. I told you, they're all snipers on this Montpelier squad. That's why, I mean, any five on the floor could be the leading scorer. Any one of the five on the floor could be the leading scorer. Rhodes had the baseline opted to come back to the middle of the floor. A little running one-hander, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Gaborio. That's going to be three on Gaborio. Now it's going to send Rhodes to the line. It'll stop the clock with 1.21 to go. So that is the only downside to this first half for Montpelier. Gaborio picking up three fouls, and he'll be replaced on the second shot as they have a couple different people at the line. Kyle Martin at the scores table, number four. On the missed first shot, and 25, Chris Richardson. Those are Montpelier changes. It's Gaborio and Brigham coming out. Brigham having just a red-hot first half. Might be at 20 points already. He's got four three-pointers unofficially. And Rhodes can't nurse that second shot in, and they're just going out with the ball to Mishad. Of course, very impressive player in the first game. Mishad is the first game off the bench. Can good role players off the bench from between Martin and Mishad. And now travel called on Martin. He got into the paint and got things a little touchy for him down there. And now Donor will get set, and he'll have on the ball number 25 Richardson as he'll defend the pass out there for Montpelier. 68 seconds to go in this. Well, it's been a long first half for MSJ. They've been held to 16 points, and they've given up 41. Altabell to Thayer. They run a little weave in the backcourt, and Thayer will spin, and his pass will be saved by Altabell. There's the trap, and then steal by Mishad. Up, and nope, Martin right there, though. He'll be blocked, pick up the loose ball, take a little eight-footer. No. A couple chances, no good, and there's the foul. Curran got down there, got the third offensive rebound, and got tied up, and we're going to have it be white basketball.
Well, I know it's going to be a tough game for MSJ tonight, but just about everything Montpelier wanted to do, they've done here in this first half. See Martin right out defensively, right on there. Rhodes, and he's he's been a very bright spot here for MSJ in his first half. Bizon to the hole, and he'll get a nice feed by Rhodes. Good roll to the basket by Bizon, and it's 41 18. Martin killed the dribble, needs some help. We'll come to Curran. Williams with the touch to Mishad to the hole, not this time, and he'll come out to Thayer with 14 seconds on the clock in the first half. Thayer, he's going to shoot and miss. Mishad, seven seconds, six seconds into the front court to the elbow. He'll pull it back out, and he'll take the shot, and he'll be off the mark, front of the rim. He's going to be chased down by Martin. That'll count? No. Montpelier. Ah, quite an offensive performance, but their defense just is impressive. They've got a 41-18 lead at the half, almost to the championship. Me shot and bring him in the back court. It'll be Montpelier basketball to get things going. And just to state the obvious, and not to make too much of an understatement, but MSJ's got a big start here to the third quarter. They're down 41 to 18. They have scored nine points in each of the first two quarters. So actually. If the things stay consistent, and you look at the score the way it is right now, 41 to 18. If Montpelier did not score another point in the ball game, and Mache on their average wouldn't still would still win the game. That was pointed out to me by two other people. I didn't figure that out for myself. Look at Dowling with the steal and got it. He single-handedly outnumbered MSJ and stole the ball and got the bucket. Reedy with the catch. He'll break the timeline, get it off the Thayer. Thayer will drive to the baseline and. Throw the ball back. Nice catch by Donor. He'll step to the hole and leave it on the front of the rim. Get his own missed shot. Pump fake go up and keep the ball alive for the second time. It'll be saved this time. I'm going out of bounds by bringing him to Mishot. Mishot up ahead to Parker and Evan Parker. He'll go to the hole and look at this weak side rebound. They missed the little bunny that time, but again, just domination on the boards. Every facet of the game by Montpelier. That pass tipped away, and no, they're saying it was not tipped away. And they went to go down inside to Reedy, and it looked like the ball got knocked away from him, but they're saying nobody in green touched it. But look how quick they can get the ball back down to Dowling. Planted his foot, turned, and fired, and going to the line to shoot two. Jim Corbo will give us a number here. That'll be foul on Chris Reedy, and now send Dowling to the line. And he'll be shooting a couple. 43-18. We're just underway here in the third quarter. Watching the tip-off tournament championship game between Montpelier and MSJ. The you know, consolation game was won by Fairhaven. They defeated Otter Valley. So congratulations to the Slaters. And that was the second foul on Reed. First on the team here in the second half. Dowling will not get that second shot to go. A nice box out by Reedy. He'll go to Donor and now Thayer will get in there and make the grab of the pass and he'll get the ball to Benedict. Rhodes, who played very well in that first half for MSJ, faked the pass down the side, came back between circles. The Benedict Donor shot up an air ball. I don't believe it was tipped, and then Donor will pick up the foul, and that'll become the second team foul, and it's a non-shooting foul, foul on the floor, and Corbel will give us the official call, and it's going to be two on Donor now. So Brigham who had a tremendous first half. I didn't get a point count on him, but he had to be 20 plus points. He had four three-pointers alone. And that ball will go to third. You see that Gribbons went to the floor. I think he's trying to draw the foul. There really wasn't that much contact in there. Benedict up and got it. Good push, good finish by the Mounties. 43-20. Evan Parker, he likes to play at the up-tempo like Mishad does. Oh, look at that shot by Mishad. Three ball by Mishad makes it 46-20 Montpelier. Here's the grab by Thayer in the front court. He'll go inside the free throw line, then dish the ball back out on the kick out to Benedict. Then Benedict will hand the ball back to Thayer. He'll go to Donor. Up and no. Ball fake. Foul. Nice job by Nolan Rhodes getting on the boards and drawing the foul. He's going to be getting two shots here. That's going to be on Parker, the foul. It's going to be his first personal and the team's first here in the second half. That's on senior, Nolan Rhodes, will be good on his first shot. Leads at 25, 46 to 21. Seven. 
He'll get one and two, and Dowling lost the ball out of bounds. So I will go over to MSJ. And again, they, they need to put together a seven or eight point run right now. They know they can't make up all 25 points in one burst. But they do need to make some inlets here. Donor up and blocked and foul. Dowling didn't give up the easy shot. He'll draw the foul. And two more shots coming up. So Donor at the line to shoot two. So MSJ's been to the line a couple times here in this third quarter. And he's not going to get the rim to cooperate. There's Aiden King coming in for Dowling. He'll sit down with two fouls. The only person on the who's playing, or actually not playing, who's here tonight, he's got three fouls, is Gaborio of Montpelier. He's on the bench right now. And that will pop out of there. Mishad will get the rebound. But I tell you, when you're struggling to score, you've got to get those free throws to drop for you. Brigham left alone, and five three-pointers for Brigham, unofficially. Again, no defense came out to challenge him, and at this point in the ballgame, and what he's done, Gondorner trying to beat the press, the trap on the sideline by dribbling out of it. Very fortunate, MSJ, to retain possession of the basketball right there. Meatshot coming out, Martin coming in to take his spot, number four for Montpelier. Thayer with the grab and heavy traffic goes up over the top to Benedict. Benedict will slide along the baseline, got too far underneath for the shot. Ball will squirt out, come to Gribbins. Gribbins on the break, gives it up to Martin to the pole and he'll get the finish. Beautifully ran break, very unselfish play. Everybody kept their spacing and just good communications out there. And that ball tipped and stolen away by King. Oh, rare miss for Brigham. He'll chase down the ball. Mel Parker's teammate will get a hold of the basketball. Parker still got his dribble now. He'll start the dribble live. Go to Martin on the weave to Brigham on the run. The two point shot this time. He's got to be near 30 points. Reedy with a fastball in the middle of the court. We'll give it up to Benedict on the floor once and can't get the finish. It's a good break. Nice move, just too hard off the glass. Parker, that might have been partially tipped. Certainly was altered. On the crashing of the boards it was Brigham that came in, tried to put the shot up all in one motion with the rebound. Fair with it now with the push down the far side. Martin there defensively. This is Benedict in white. Benedict will bring the ball all the way back between circles. To Reedy. Ball tip. Keeps it. Got it. Nice concentration by Reedy. 53-23. Now I told you, if they got up to 50 points or more, the game was over. And I think 53-23. 55-23. Pretty much exemplifies that point. Rhodes with the grab. And again, the consolation game was won by Fairhaven over Otter Valley. And Shea defeated Otter Valley to get here. And so that means obviously that Montpelier defeated Fairhaven to get here. So Benedict will lose it. Unforced error out of bounds. And Louis Altabell, number 20 in the ball game now for MSJ. He played some minutes in that first half. Played, I thought, very well, actually. So, Brigham will pass up the shot, go to Gribbins on a give and go. Ball will go off from the hands of the defender. I believe it was off from Donor out of bounds. In any event, it'll become Montpelier basketball. Parker faked the inside move and see that quick, decisive passing. He wanted to go down to King, went off his hands. It was a tough pass, the handle is low at his knees. Benedict up and no, no foul on the contact. He let it go and King turned and went out of bounds and it's gonna be having a shape of basketball. Now he's saying he was pushed, but I think he just lost where he was on the floor and he turned and dribbled out of bounds. And again, the Mounties have to take advantage of every little opportunity like this when they get a second chance for the ball. Altabell, a oh, nice, nice job by Louis Altabell. And he'll get the finish and the bucket. Ribbons, quick acceleration through the paint, got it. Put some English on the ball, kissed it off the glass and in. Yeah, they, I don't think they want to use their timeout. There was a timeout call and then taken back. See the officials talking over. And 
Yeah, they're going to have a sub come in. It's going to be Williams, number 11 for Montpelier out there. So Philip Williams, number 11 in the ball game. 57-25, Montpelier with the lead. And they, they've been as dominant as the score has in, will indicate on the board. Benedict with Williams all over him up near the midcourt logo. Wants to dump the ball down, and again, just nobody came to the ball. He had nowhere to go with it. It's a takeaway by Brigham. Williams with Benedict with a big swat and a block, and Parker will come out of the pack with it. And then come over to Brigham. He'll ball fake, bring it back out, get control of it beyond the arc, and come back to. Well, Martin actually took the ball away from Parker, and Parker's going to explode to the hole, and oh, I think it would have counted. I think he's going to get two shots out of this deal. Out the ball with the foul. Yeah, we're going to have an MSJ timeout, 57-25 Montpelier with the lead with 2.38 to go in the third quarter. Officially, I'm going to show you one timeout left in the basketball game. There's still 2.38 to go in the third quarter. Montpelier ball on the baseline, and you can see Martin broke open. He'll get the ball popped to him. He'll swing it back to Parker. Here's a nice catch by Brigham, and then they'll go to Williams. And his turn to get in the scoring column as he'll get the bounce his way, and then he'll drop through the hole. 59 to 25. Altabell's long pass just does elude the fingertips of Montpelier's Williams. This is Altabell into the front court to Benedict. He'll stop at the top of the arc, put the brakes on spin, and bring them all over him. And Brigham got the block from behind, saved by Williams, and then Benedict just gave up on the play, and he took the ball away right from in front of him. The Parker with the finish on the other end. Oh, that just really typified right there of what one team's effort and one team's not be able to execute out there. I'm trying to be politically correct about that. It's night and day watching the two teams, in other words. Parker pumps, fires, and no. The long rebound comes down to Brigham. He'll put it up and get it. Lee John B. John is set to come in along with Leighton Thayer. They're at the scores table for MSJ. And that'll go off from Donor's hands out of bounds. And I think it's Montpelier ball. It is. Parker will sit down and take a breather for Montpelier and get another solid performance by Parker. Look at it into King, and he was inside shooting range, but gave it back to Martin. He'll be off the mark. Rebound on the baseline, and it's going to be King that came down with it. He'll come back to Williams. He sets up, and no. It was a three-point shot that was just a little bit off the mark, and now no one rolls yet another rebound. We'll look for an outlet pass, gets it up to Thayer. Minute 16 to go in the third quarter, 63-25 Montpelier. Rhodes working against Mishad. Mishad's just long and gangly out there. He's tough to get the round as far as defensively trying to beat him. And he's quick. Martin got the hand. Yeah, he got old Louis hand. And it's going to be side out. It's going to be the fourth team fall and the second fall on Martin. Pat Curran, 22, coming in the ballgame for Aiden King for Montpelier. Benedict will pop free into the back court, and Williams will follow him right back there. There with the catch on the elbow. Get below the free throw line. He'll dish the ball back to Benedict, and Benedict will go up from the free throw line. No. Rebound fought for along the baseline between Rhodes and Meshot. Last touch by Meshot. It'll be MSJ basketball. Rhodes looking, looking, and just has to bring the ball all the way out to Altabell. So Altabell, since he's been in the ball game, he's done a lot of positive things out there for MSJ. He just kind of has good instincts like that right there. He just paid it to the basket and banged it off the glass and in. So Louis Altabell with the big bucket for MSJ. Misha, no. Got a couple threes. Lee John B's on out there, and he's again when he's gotten playing minutes tonight, he's played very effectively. He got the rebound. And just 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fair with the good hands. He'll get to the free throw line and pull the shot down. They'll work it around to Benedict. He'll put up a three ball front rim it, and the rebound will come down to me shot. He'll put it on the floor. Double dribble, no call. And with five seconds, four seconds, Martin will be blocked out there. And oh, they no, no foul call. It's going to be blocked out of bounds by Rhodes. Stays with Montpelier, and he'll have two, two seconds even on the clock in a 63-27 ball game. The catch, and oh, he didn't know what time was. Yeah, it's 
It's going to be Montpelier 63, MSJ 57 going into the fourth quarter of play. Well, barring the most amazing comeback I will ever witness, Montpelier is just eight minutes away from getting the trophy for the championship for the 2008 tip-off tournament. They dominated Fairhaven the other night in the opening round, and they've dominated MSJ here tonight in the title game. MSJ will spread the floor, and Rhodes will spin and get it. I tell you, Nolan Rhodes has just played his heart out tonight out there for MSJ. It's Bison there defensively, Lee John Bison, and he will alter the shot. Almost got the rebound. Gaborio back out there with the three falls, number 24 for Montpelier. Nice catch by Martin. He'll kick it out, and this is three point shot. No. Long rebound, and Bison this time able to hold on the ball and ends up in Thayer's hands, and then he'll be contested in the backcourt by Williams. Altabelle. Again, like I said, he's he's been solid tonight, just like that. I don't understand why Louie doesn't start, to tell you the truth. Solid, just solid out there. Nothing flashy, just a block from behind by Rhodes, and he controlled the basketball, so Rhodes has had enough of this. He wants to finish strong. 63-31, Montpelier. Rebound, gets tipped from Altabelle to Fair, and he'll put it up and in. The assist will go to Altabelle. Parker with that quick explosion and Benedict will hit the floor and Benedict will be called for the blocking foul. That ball will go on the baseline. Gaborio will take it out, number 24. Now Gaborio, who was so impressive the other night, was the leading scorer for Montpelier. It was quiet tonight, but you can see how team the team is such a team. They have great parts, but they make up a great complete project when they're finished. So he had an off night, but then Brigham stepped up and had a tremendous night. What a pass. What a finish. Nice job. Good hands by Bison, and then the finish, and it's 63-35, Montpelier. Hopefully neither coach will use any of their timeouts here in the fourth quarter, and we can just call it a night. Gaborio trying to find that shooting touch. as a rebound up ball. Pat Kern got fouled as he got the offensive rebound. And that will send Kern to the line and stop the clock with 5.50 to go. That's going to be the second foul on Bison. And Kern, after a long look, will flick the shot up. Didn't really use his iron for his legs, he just kind of flicked his wrist. And Gribbins coming in for Williams from Montpelier. Gribbins will wear number 12. He started the ball game, got a breather, and he's back out there now. So on the second attempt by Curran. He'll get it. A lot better looking shot that time than his first one. Altabell will just snap the pass, put some juice on it, get it past the defender, get it there. It's there his pass, stolen by Parker, and he'll put it up and in. Another turnover by MSJ, and there's a kick ball defensively, and he'll just... Montpelier now going to pull out of the press with 5.41 to go, and their coach just told him to pull it off. 66-35. Now he's down by a lot. They'll give the ball to Bison. He'll turn and travel call. Hey, he did the right idea. He rolled to the basket after the screen and just really didn't know the defender was right there, which really what's caused the travel. So Gaborio and Parker in the backcourt with Gribbins, Kern, and Martin out there. That's the Montpelier five. Well, Gaborio just lost his footing or something, just collapsed on the floor. He's okay. A little travel knock called Rhodes again with another nice pretty finish. He said Rhodes played about as hard and well as, as he probably can. I mean, he's done a good, good job. He blocked that, not pick up the foul. And that's just good hard play by Nolan Rhodes. Martin tipped it, no good to Gaborio up and fouled. And it should be Gaborio going to the line to shoot two. Falls on tw 20, that's going to be on Altabelle. That's going to be his third personal, and that will send Gaborio. It is Gaborio going to the line. And we're at five minutes even to go in that first shot. Good. Richardson and Mishad, 25 and 33 respectively, coming in for 
Montpelier. Boy, I tell you, you got to keep track of this Montpelier team throughout the season. They eh? good looking group, very diversified out there. And the second shot by Gaborio is good as they're on the way to breaking 70 points for the second game in a row in the tournament. They had, I believe it's 71 unofficially in the first game. I mean, I did the game, but it's been a couple days now. I believe they had 71 points in the first game against Fairhaven. They're at 68 right now with 446. Go Benedict with the steal. He'll twist and turn. He'll find the open court. He's going to pull up from the free throw line and be off the mark. And then Mishot on the rebound was fouled. And I believe it's going to be on Bizon. Yeah, it's on Bizon. It's the one and one. Okay, it's the seventh team fall, so. We have a timeout taken by Montpelier. They're up 68 37. Me, that was a timeout taken by Montpelier. Me shot at the line. They have Gaborio, Richardson, Gribbons, and Parker on the floor, and that shot will be off the mark. Gaborio will tip it to himself, chase it down in, in the corner, and he'll toss up over the top, and I believe it was off from there out of bounds. It'll be green basketball, so Montpelier will have it. No, 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 no. My mistake is going to be white basketball, be MSJ basketball. Donor back in the ball game. He'll put the ball on the plate to Layton Thayer, and Thayer being guarded by Gribbons. Screen set by Rhodes. They didn't give the ball back to him on the roll. And this is Reedy with the ball now. Reedy looks for the cut by Donor. He'll force it up, and no. Ball fake up. Rhodes, oh, he's going to the line. Tell you, Rhodes, I, and I can't say it enough, staying right with it like it was a one point ball game. Just playing, playing, playing. Nolan Rhodes at the line, and he's going to get two shots out of that deal. As it's 4.15 to go on the clock. That's the third fall on me shot, and then it's the fourth team fall. And that rattled hard, but wouldn't drop, and you'll get the second chance here to try to salvage one. So the senior, Nolan Rhodes up, and got the second shot to bounce in for him. Gaborio will bring it into Parker. It's Parker. Got to the top of the arc, pulled it out between the circles, gave it up on the wing to Mishon. There's Gaborio on a cut and can't get the finish. Rebound tipped around with Rhodes, and then Rhodes again will get it. He tipped it away from one of the Montpelier players to himself and then made the snatch. And there, brought it down to the free throw line and brought it back to the elbow. This is going to be Altabell. He wants to go baseline and good defensive job by Mishon, moving his feet, taking the spot away. There, we'll go for some movement. We'll give it down to Rhodes. Rhodes against Parker, turns, kicks. Reedy, 10-footer, got it. Good movement. Real good cycle that time by MSJ. And Nishad lost the dribble and then tapped the ball back to Parker. We're at 3.24 to go on the evening, and it's a 68-40 Montpelier lead. Shot up, and that was... Off the side of the backboard, comes down to Altabell, now to Thayer, off from Reedy's hands. Yeah, they're going to get the spacing and run the play now. So go to Reedy, a great catch, tough pass, turns, and got it! Tell you what, that's, that's a great set of hands to make the catch like that. 68 to 42. I'm feel you're looking for Cross court to Mishad, and that'll be off the mark. Rebound tipped around and brought down by Altabell. It's passed all the way by Gaborio, and Gaborio's pass will go off from the head of Altabell. Come back to Gribbons, back to Gaborio. Parker will settle things down. He'll penetrate, then dish off to Mishad, and he'll be off the mark again. Weak side rebound. No good. All caught and shot in one motion. Just didn't happen. Behind the back there with the dribble, he'll work off the screen set by Reed. He actually go too wide of it, and they couldn't brush off from it. The defender, Mishad, followed him right through it. Donor with the basketball. A lot different tonight for Donor. Now a lot of space to shoot. Tipped and stolen away by Montpelier. They've got a three-on-one. Gaborio gave the ball up. Richardson will get it. They're at 70 now, so a nice three-on-one break. Very unselfish play by Gaborio. Let's go get the assist on the basket by Richardson. A minute, 58 to go on the night. Altabell. We'll dribble down in closer, and boy, I tell you, I, I like Altabell. I really don't know why he doesn't start. We got a Montpelier timeout. It's 70 to 44. The Montpelier squad with the lead, with just a minute 43 to go.
That's a Richardson back in the ball game to put the ball in the play. You'll have Parker in the backcourt. Mishad, King, and Phillips. That's the five on the floor for Montpelier right now. Williams put the brakes on, goes baseline to King and the foul. Reedy will pick up the foul and again just they spread the floor and then just that little slide play along the baseline. And I'll send Aiden King to the line number 21. I'll stop the clock with 133 to go. King will be up and that first shot's not going to happen. You'll get a second chance. And Martin at the scores table, number four. He'll check in for Montpelier and he'll place Parker. Parker gets a good hand from the dance from Montpelier that came down and uh, very, very impressive ball player Parker is to watch. And Lee John Bison at the scores table, checking in for Emma Shane. King missed everything on that. That's about the worst play that Montpelier's ran tonight. Nolan Rhodes coming out. Yeah, he played a heck of a game for MSJ Rhodes did. Excellent effort by Nolan Rhodes tonight. Now the clock will start. Let's see if we get this last 90 seconds out of the way. Have the trophy presentation. Thayer with the pass down inside the donor. He's double teamed. He'll take it back out. Thayer will put it up and becomes an assist. Goes to Reedy. He'll put it up and in. 70 to 46 now, Montpelier just a minute away from hoisting that championship trophy of the tip-off tournament for 2008. Richardson, ball fake, and he might have traveled. He did. Call for the travel. It'll be a turnover, and there has not been many turnovers tonight to call on Montpelier. I never did get the final point count for Brigham, but he had to be 30. Around 30 points, 33, 27, 33, something like that. Very impressive shooting performance. And they'll turn the ball over and they'll become Montpelier ball with just 49 seconds to go in the basketball game. Again, Fairhaven winning the consolation game, Montpelier winning the championship game. It's Richardson holding the ball up top on the arc, waits for Martin to slide across. He'll get the pass, look inside, nothing there, come back, and this is going to be Williams. Williams with there on him defensively. Penetrated, kicked off, and they'll run the clock down to 31 seconds. Mishad to the hole, to the finish, no. Rebound, King up, and yes, Aiden King will get the finish on the missed shot and make it 72-46. And what happens, we've got a big puddle of water on the floor, and Jim Corp will going to pick it up here and sweep it up so nobody will get slipped on it and get hurt. And nobody will slip on it and get hurt. So that was an official's timeout right there. No damage done. And they'll bring it into Altabel. So the Mounties will go to one and one on the season. Greedy on the roll, got the pass, passed up the 10, well, the 15 foot shot. A little running one hander off the glass, no good. And Montpelier told to hold the ball and run out the last six seconds, five seconds, four, three. That's the ball game, and Montpelier will have the 72 46 win over MHJ. They're going to present the trophies. To each team. See Dick Densmore bringing out the trophy, setting them up at the center table. Marty McDonald will be doing the PA work. They'll have the handshakes and then we'll have the trophy ceremony.
Again, congratulations to everyone and uh, thank you very much for coming.